The Ayodh Ayodhya, the city of holy city of Uttar Pradesh, is celebrating the Potsav, the mega Diwali festival with great pomp. There was even a laser sound and light show. The event was attended by the first lady of South Korea, Kim Jong Suk. After over three lakh earthen lamps were being lit as well in an attempt to beat the world records that were set last year, Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. Uh, while addressing the crowd, announced that Ayodhya will soon have a new medical college named after King Dasharatha in Ayodhya and an airport which will be named after Lord Ram. Bhaiyo Beno, today we have a new medical college here. We are making a new medical college here. And the new medical college is being done here by the people who are doing here. और मैं चाहूंगा कि मेडिकल कॉलेज का नाम भी यहां पर बने तो वह यहां की उस परंपरा के साथ राजर्षि दशरथ के नाम पर इस मेडिकल कॉलेज का नाम हो जाए राजर्षि दशरथ के नाम पर मेडिकल कॉलेज का नाम हो और यहां पर हम एयरपोर्ट का भी निर्माण कार्य कर रहे हैं एयरपोर्ट का नाम मर्यादा पुरुषोत्तम भगवान श्री राम के ही नाम पर रखेंगे well, the Chief Minister's obsession to rename cities and districts continues. Remember, Allahabad was renamed Prayagraj and today, Fazabad district has been renamed Sri Ayodhya. There was no mention there of either the temple or the statue that was announced some time ago. But moving on to Jammu and Kashmir as we continue to track the citizens' struggle due to early snowfall that hit the valley, the power outage continues to disrupt life. Two days, um, after two days, only 60% of the power supply in the valley has been restored in areas in South Kashmir where there's still darkness. Authorities tell Mirror now that it may take two more days to complete the restoration of electricity. Now, I want to remind our viewers that citizens, especially children, are living in these areas right now in freezing weather with no heating and no hot water. The power outage continues to be a big concern. The Jammu Srinagar National Highway has been shut down again. My colleague uh, Farid joins us live right now from Kashmir. Uh, Farid, what can you tell us? We, we talked about this yesterday and the concern of large areas of South Kashmir that were cut off both uh, from their electricity supply and the roads. Has anything improved over the last 24 hours since we spoke? Yes, uh, that, that's absolutely right. In fact, uh, since yesterday, uh, 60% uh, is the level that has reached as far as restoration of electricity is concerned, Pan Valley. But again, the uh, trouble uh, again seems to be South Kashmir, where, as we have been reporting non-stop about the fact that uh, Gulgam district remains the worst affected, 0% uh, restoration still. And in fact, uh, the big mirror now impact is that after we showed the visuals of the spot and exposed the garment, because uh, it was clearly lying that uh, restoration work has started. There was no restoration work there till yesterday, but once we highlight that today, uh, since early morning, there are men and machinery have been pressed into service to ensure that these towers uh, are restored. It will still take some time, no attempts to really get something, uh, to get an alternative supply for Kulgam because uh, it is, uh, as I said, complete uh, darkness uh, that that district is in. Only hospitals they have somehow managed to bring electricity to, but if you talk about the common man, as you rightly said, facing immense hardships. Now, as I speak to you, it's uh, sub-zero, it's minus one degrees in Srinagar and if you move out of Srinagar uh, temperatures are even lesser so in the, this circumstance if you are living without uh, basic uh, necessity and I mean electricity is very basic in our times and that is missing now uh, the uh, the government since day one had been making tall claims about restoration in two days but it's been uh, is, in fact today is day four and uh, no restoration as far as South Kashmir is concerned uh, so clearly people facing a lot of hardships uh, sources in the PDD tell us that it will still take at least uh, three or four days uh, to get uh, a basic minimum as far as electricity is concerned and if you talk of other parts of the valley and Srinagar as well as I speak to you in our locality as well in Srinagar in the heart of city there is no electricity 
So since uh, that time it has been erratic uh, electric uh, supply as far as uh, Srinagar is concerned and other parts and uh, why the government has uh, ensured an inquiry but uh, it seems that nothing has happened to uh, really ask for accountability. You write uh, Jammu Srinagar National Highway finally has opened because weather improved today but as I said that highway remains closed uh, more often than not and very uh, few other times when uh, it really remains open. Faye? Farid, if you could tell us this, uh, we talked yesterday about the fact that it was just about, uh, uh, just over a foot of snow that caused the power outage. Do we know what happened exactly and why there has been a power outage so far? Well, Faye, the fact of the matter is that uh, th this was a very shoddy construction. There is no doubt about it. Uh, uh, we went in depth into this and we found out that it was co these towers were construct constructed in 2005. And that too, if you talk of, uh, uh, there was no uh, outside agency that was uh, uh, roped in. It was uh, the department to which itself made the tower. So clearly, if you talk of the locals, you talk of the insiders, they say that uh, it was not made well. Clearly, uh, probably corruption or uh, definitely, uh, as far as the contractors are concerned, uh, there would have been some kind of a nexus that led to this kind of a construction because hardly one feet, we're not talking of a snowstorm like Europe. Uh, it was one feet of snow in Kulgam and that brought down four towers and knocked out electricity. Uh, as of now, as I said, absolutely no accountability, no attempt to really see who is responsible uh, for this because if there is no accountability, as we discussed yesterday as well, it's uh, all about uh, press releases, uh, photo ops as far as the authorities yes. are concerned, one press release after the other, one officer talking about him really working over time to get it restored. Uh, but on the ground, uh, situation is the same. So it's again about right. photo op as well as the government uh, is and, concerned. And People were hoping that since there is no political interference, governor's administration, something may happen. Yeah. Very quickly also, uh, we did talk about the apple farmers yesterday and the loss that the apple farmers are facing. Do we know now if there is a clearer estimate of that loss? And also, are there any other crops that have failed because of this, uh, you know, early snow that Kashmir has received? Yes, we, uh, massive damage as far as uh, apple farmers is concerned. Generally, fruit growers across the valley have suffered. It's not only about South Kashmir. We even got uh, reports and, in, in fact, visuals and ground reports from North Kashmir as well, where situation is no different from South. Even Central Kashmir districts have suffered. As far as the government is concerned, they say that uh, they are uh, really estimating the losses. Revenue Department has been assigned the job of going on the ground and estimating the losses. Uh, other day, in fact, two days back, they said in within two, three days, they'll do it but as I said uh, it's day four and uh, as far as those losses are concerned there is no estimate but our sources say uh, we spoke to uh, some of uh, the leaders of uh, the unions of uh, the, these fruit growers they say that it is uh, close to three to four hundred crores that they have uh, suffered losses it's not only about snow face also about uh, this uh, highway that remains closed more often and uh, the, the produce uh, that they send to markets across India that gets uh, uh, that that gets spoiled in those trucks when they get stuck due to closure of the highway so it is multiple issues that these people are facing. Uh, we'll have to wait and watch how the government tackles it. Obviously, they're expecting some kind of a co compensation from the government and obviously should uh, really come forward and help these people because uh, uh, the other day, in fact, if you would have seen those visuals, uh, uh, they were heartbreaking seeing this uh, apple farmer, one of them. And that really is a situation of all of them across that, that one can easily generalize. He was crying. Uh, he, was, he was basically shattered and he just was trying to uh, get his produce out of uh, that snow and that is uh, the situation of all of them across the Kashmir Valley. So this is something that the government should see and help them out uh, right now because otherwise yes, uh, yes. they're shattered and they're, they're very badly backbroken as far as uh, this latest snow snowfall is concerned. All right, Fareed, many thanks for joining us here on Mirror Now at Prime Time. We reiterate our commitment to track the issues of the people of Kashmir on this channel just like we do for all other states. Uh, moving on to the killing of the Tigris Avni. Now, the battle that's escalated between the central government union minister Menika Gandhi and the Maharashtra state. Miranao has access details of a text message allegedly sent to Menka Gandhi by forest officials on the killing of the Tigris, which refutes the claims made by the Maharashtra government. Now, remember, the Maharashtra government said the Tigris was killed only after she charged the hunters. Sources claim that the text message sent to the by the chief conservator, uh, conservator to Manika Gandhi calls the incident accidental. 
The text has said that the Tigris was on the side of the road around 100 meters away from the shooting team. There was apprehension that the tiger might pounce. Before anything could happen, the shooting team panicked and shot her. However, uh, the Maharashtra Forest Minister has refuted uh, Union Minister Menika Gandhi's allegations that the tiger was shot without any efforts to capture her alive. The State Forest Minister Sudhir Mungatiwar has spoken exclusively with Miranaz Amitabal Chandra, brazenly claiming that nobody is taking Menka Gandhi's words seriously. He says he's ready for a probe. देखो ऐसा है उन्होंने पूरा एसएमएस पढ़ा नहीं पहली बात तो पीसीसीएफ को मनेका जी ने बहुत गंदा ऐसा एसएमएस भेजा उसके जवाब में पूरी स्टोरी तो वो लिख नहीं सकते थे उन्होंने ये एसएमएस के माध्यम से कहा कि जब हमला हुआ तब वो तो डरेंगे ही और डर के मारे किया उसमें क्या गलत है इन्हें मनेका जी ने एक इतनी बड़ी मंत्री ने एक पीसीसीएफ को ऐसे शब्दों से क्या एसएमएस भेजा कि जो मैं सार्वजनिक रूप से भी नहीं कर सकता हूँ ऐसा एसएमएस भेजा कोई भी बात की सत्यता जानना ये तो अनुचित नहीं होगा ना मैं तो सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जज की बात कर रहा हूँ क्योंकि ऐसा ना हो कि राज्य स्तर के लोगों ने जैसे मैंने तो इसके पहले ही इन्फॉर्मेशन मांगी जाँच करके मुझे रिपोर्ट मांगा है मगर कल कोई कहेगा वो तो आपकी अधिकारी है वो तो रिपोर्ट आपको जैसा चाहिए वैसा देंगे मैं तो बार बार कह रहा हूँ कि भारत सरकार ने पांच जजों की नियुक्ति करनी चाहिए उसमें क्या अड़चन है तो पेटिशनर्स का ये भी कहना है कि इंडस्ट्रीज को वहाँ पे लेके आएंगे आप इसीलिए ऐसे सब किया है आपका क्या कहना है उस मुझे लगता है कि झूठ बोलने की एक मर्यादा होती है इतना झूठ वो शेरनी साठ किलोमीटर दूर है जहां इंडस्ट्री है वो 60 किलोमीटर दूर है उसका क्या संबंध कोई बताए ना और मैं ओपन चैलेंज करता हूं कि किसी को भी कोई भी पनिशमेंट हमारे अधिकारियों हम देने को तैयार है ऐसी गंदी बात है तेरा लोगों की मौत होने के बाद आपको ऐसी राजनीति सूझती है आ, कि बहुत सारी बार पोलिटिशियन से फोन आते हैं इसीलिए ये सब करना पड़ता है आपका क्या कहना ऐसा तो मुझे नहीं लगता ऐसा होता तो फिर चार साल में कई शेर मरते चार साल में एक ही शेर को मारने का या पकड़ने का क्यों आदेश दिया जाता है एनटीसी की गाइडलाइन है तो अभी उत्तर प्रदेश में शेर मरा तो वहां के पोलिटिशियन लोगों ने जाके मारा या 2009 में पीलीभीत जो मनेका जी का कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी है वहां शेरनी को मारा था वाघिन को मारा था Well, a bit mounting pressure from Menka Gandhi, another activist to take action against the Maharashtra Forest Minister, Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis has also reacted. The Chief Minister has told Mira now that it won't be, uh, it would be wrong to blame the Forest Minister for the killing, and he's also said that the decision was taken after a prolonged thought. He's assured us of an investigation and that he will personally speak with the Union Minister Menka Gandhi. In fact, my colleague Amita Balchandra, who's been tracking this story on the ground, joins us live. Amita, uh, obviously, he says, uh, she says right now, and there's been a lot of confusion about the details of uh, of the killing. What is the latest you've picked up in terms of that investigation that the chief minister is going to launch? Well, uh, the chief minister has responded to us saying that uh, a probe will be ordered. We don't know whether an independent agency will be set up. In fact, petitioners are asking for a special investigation team to be set up at this point. Uh, but uh, uh, the next course of action will really be uh, after the post-mortem report that is perhaps going to come out tomorrow or day after uh, come out, Faye, uh, because uh, that is when the petitioners say that they will take the next step, uh, whether to file a PIL or not, based on that. That post-mortem report, based on the facts uh, that come up in that post-mortem report. So far as uh, uh, as the case uh, is concerned, right now there are conflicting views. While uh, the union minister has um, alleged that uh, the, the forest minister was involved, the forest minister has refuted all of the claims made by the union minister, saying uh, that uh, everything is false. In fact, he also alleges that the tigress, in fact, pounced on the team, which is why uh, which is why they had to shoot the tiger. Uh, in self-defense. However, the significant portion here is the SMS that's come in from A.K. Mishra, who is the principal chief conservative officer, because he was the first person to send in that order where uh, tranquilization of cubs followed by tigress followed 
uh, uh, by the fact that if that was uh, was not uh, going to take place, then uh, you know elimination should have happened. And of course, the High Court and the Supreme Court upheld that particular order. He sent in an SMS saying that the team uh, was in fact panic stricken. So there are conflicting views at this point, but the state government maintaining that all of these allegations are completely false, but and the chief minister is saying that a probe will be ordered soon. All right, uh, many thanks, Am Amita, for bringing us that update and staying on the story here for uh, Mirror Now. Turning our sights to the national capital, it continues to do battle with air pollution and currently it's in very dire straits. The air quality is within the very poor category at this point. In fear of being exposed to extreme health hazards, residents are now gifting each other masks for Diwali instead of sweets. The state government has installed air purifiers in parts of the city as a measure to curb the menace of poisonous gas. But one really wonders why the state government and the central government couldn't put aside their differences simply to solve the problem before Diwali this year. Take a look. Uh, my colleague Ashwarya is in fact standing by live in Delhi at this point. Ashwarya, uh, Unfortunately, I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking to even see you have to wear the mask at this point. But what is the update on the quality of air? And it's currently past 8 p.m. Are there crackers going off in the city of Delhi? Are people violating the Supreme Court order? Well, Faye, we'll still have to wait because we haven't seen a lot of people bursting crackers. But we do know that a lot of people did buy crackers and a lot of households where there are small children do have firecrackers. Now, we spoke with a couple of people and most of the people are of the opinion that people should refrain from bursting any kind of crackers because experts and doctors, both of them highlight the fact that if crackers, if there, are, if there is cracker bursting in the national capital, we could see the air quality deteriorating to a very, very, very poor level. But we do know and uh, even the, the, the police is aware that they will have to be extremely strict and they will have to make sure that people do not burst crackers. Also, we know that green crackers, not a single shop Mira now visited, had a single green cracker. All the sellers went on to say that they would only have green crackers next year. Apart from that, if we talk about the air quality, right now it's in very poor, uh, it's, it's, it's very poor, which means that anyone, be it a young child, be it an elderly person or a young healthy person, he or she is, he's inhaling this air. That means that this air is toxic and the health hazard is extremely high. And, uh, all right, uh, Aishwarya, of course, we did hear some crackers go off in your background, but by Delhi standards, that does seem to be a fairly quiet Diwali this year. Have people, have a lot of people left the city for this weekend instead of just staying home? Yes, we do know that a lot of people uh, uh, have left and uh, have left and they will only be coming back on Sunday. We can hear uh, some crackers, but we can hear them at a distance. But this is nothing as compared to what people do on Diwali. But the authorities are bracing. They are bracing because they know that a lot of people will come out and burst crackers tomorrow, which is the, the tomorrow night. And also, uh, we know that air purifiers have been installed, but we did go and check. Most of these air purifiers are in certain parts of the Delhi and they are not covering the entire national capital, which is why experts and doctors believe that the morning after Diwali, people will have to be extremely cautious. And experts also say that people should brace yes. themselves for extremely poor air quality just the day after Diwali. All right, Ashwarya, many thanks for bringing us that update. Of course, we do understand that they have been uh, patrol cars of the police doing the rounds of residential neighborhoods, making sure that nobody does burst crackers. But we could hear, but even when Aishwarya was talking to us, we could hear crackers go off in the background. So basically, the government is now saying that tomorrow morning and the day after that, just don't leave your house at all if you live in Delhi because it's, it's undoubtedly going to be unsafe. On that terrible note, unfortunately, I have to wish you a happy Diwali. I take your leave. Uh, we do hope that uh, at, at Mirror Now that you have a safe and a, a prosperous Diwali and a new year that's filled with success. Stay with Mirror Now for more news and updates.